Good morning, I'm Sarah Sapsanama. Let's begin with the headlines of the hour. Search is on for missing passengers of two ill-fated buses swept away into Trishuli River. Indian rescue team to support in the search operation, whereabouts of 37 still unknown. Provincial politics in Sudur Pashchim in tatters, ruling and opposition sides come to blows. Province governor calls for a special convention on Tuesday. More than 100 killed so far in violent clashes between protesting students and the police in Bangladesh. Indefinite curfew in effect since last evening. And Nepal loses its second match at the Kava Under-20 Women's Volleyball Championship. Despite staging a challenging first two sets, Nepal concedes 3-0 defeat to Kyrgyzstan. Search is on for the missing passengers from the two ill-fated buses that were swept away into Trishuli River in Simaltal Chitwan last Friday. Indian rescue team is to extend help in the operation from today. So far, 25 dead bodies have been recovered while 37 others are still missing. Chief District Officer of Chitwan Indra Dev Yadav has informed that 12-membered rescue team is to reach the incident site. The team from National Digistar Response Force India will work with the team of Disaster Management Training Centre in Kurintar under Armed Police Force. The two buses that were swept away by landslide have yet to be found. 18 of the 25 bodies that have been recovered so far have been identified and their families have received the bodies. 21 of them are male and four are female. The dispute between ruling and opposition sides in Sudur Pashim province has compelled the province's governor to call for a special convention coming Tuesday. Based on the Constitution's Article 183, Sub-Article 3, province governor has called for the convention upon request from one-fourth of the provincial assembly. This comes amid preparations by Chief Minister Dirga Bahadur Sodari to announce the budget through an ordinance as his government has fall, fallen into minority following the change in equation at the center. Nepali Congress and CPNUML had suggested province governor Najir Mia to call for the convention. The two parties had also urged Chief Minister Sodari to resign. However, the latter has decided to take the vote of confidence instead within 30 days period. Of the 53 members in Sudur Pashim Province Assembly, 29 are from Congress and UML. Now, in the fiscal year 2023-24, 32 local levels did not announce their budget within deadline. Actions, however, were not taken against these local levels and they spent funds without any obstructions. A total of 49 local levels have not introduced their budget so far this year. Based on the existing legal provisions, local levels must present their budget at their assembly and have it endorsed before the end of the Nepali month of Asar. Of the local levels, one submetropolis, 12 municipalities and 36 rural municipalities have not introduced their budget this year. Spending budget without having it endorsed is identified as irregularity. However, ignoring such aspects, the local levels have been distributing salary to teachers and spending for other works. Local levels failing to endorse the budget before spending were allocated funds by the federal and provincial governments this year as well. The National Natural Resources and Fiscal Commission, which is assigned the responsibility of distributing resources, has also been ignored by the local levels. Dolpo Buddha Rural Municipality of Dolpa did not introduce its budget last year. Bodhimai and Raj Devi Municipality of Rautahad, Chinnamasta of Saptari and Jagannathpur Rural Municipality of Barsa had spent the funds without introducing their budget in the past. Aid from the federal and provincial governments are sent directly to the accounts of the local levels. Spending such funds without having the budget endorsed is considered an irregularity where anyone can file complaints and the CIA can file cases as well. However, the anti-graft body has not filed cases against any entity on these grounds so far. Such practices of the local levels have raised questions on good governance. Based on the state constitution, all three tiers of the government are independent and set their policies and programs and budget on their own. However, with the local levels remaining indifferent, the federal government, CIAA, and the Office of the Auditor General have not been able to conduct required monitoring and take actions. Based on the Department of Foreign Employment, employment among the 1.2 million youths leaving the country for employment, the highest have gone to Dubai, UAE. 
131,000 youths left for Dubai through institutional and personal channels and by renewing their labor permits. The number includes over 17,000 women. Likewise, 81,000 have gone to Malaysia, 73,000 to Saudi Arabia, 40,000 to Qatar and 20,000 to Kuwait. 12 to 14,000 have gone to European nations, Croatia and Romania. The number of applications for labor permits have gone down by 4%, while that for visit visas have gone up. Foreign employment agencies have said the lack of a mechanism to approve the workers' demand letter from European nations had compelled many to opt for the Gulf nations and Malaysia. Economists say the dependency on foreign employment was a result of the state's failure to raise employment opportunities back home. Potential sectors like industries and agriculture have not expanded as expected. Industrial sector has less than 5% contribution in generating employment, while the government has reduced intakes in army and police, citing increasing current expenses. Speaker Devraz Ghimire has expressed concerns after it was revealed that Deputy Speaker Indira Rana Magar had abused her authority to make visa recommendations for five non-parliamentarians. Speaker Ghimire called on the Deputy Speaker yesterday to inquire on the same. At yesterday's Parliament Affairs Consultation Committee meeting, members had demanded for more information on the allegation of abuse of authority and demanded for a probe and also action against Rana if needed. Speaker Ghimire at yesterday's meeting informed the committee members that he had already inquired about the incident with the Deputy Speaker and added that more discussion was needed on it. Ruling CPN UML meanwhile drew the Speaker's attention towards the incident, suggesting it was a serious nature. A complaint has been filed at the Parliamentary Committee alleging the Deputy Speaker of abusing her authority and demanding to sack her from the post. The complaint mentions that Rana had made recommendation for a U.S. visa of five non-parliamentarian. Rana had recommended the visas for the individuals to attend the 67th session of the UN's Commission on the Status of Women that took place between 6 to 6, 17th of March 2023 in New York. Rana had recommended to expedite visa interviews for four women and one man for the event. Any visa recommendations for parliament officials, lawmakers and staff are done to the Parliament Secretariat, International Relations and Coordination Division. Main opposition CPN Maui Centre has said the development was fresh and that more study was needed to make any official stand. Meanwhile, Deputy Speaker Rana has said the allegations were baseless. It is time now for our segment Public Pulse where you text us with your opinion. The question is, what do you term the statement of Deputy Speaker Indira Rana, where she has said that she had unknowingly recommended unofficial individuals to send them to the USA? Your options are A, no knowledge of law, B, abuse of authority, and C, topic for investigation. The voting is on. Type NEWS, select your option A, B, or C, and send it to 34001 to share your opinion with us. Now, in our public voice segment, today we've asked in several provinces what should be done to raise per capita income in accordance to the rising inflation. Let's take a look at what they had to say. सबभन्दा पहिला आफै सक्रिय हुनु पर्यो त्यसै विभिन्न दृष्टिकोण विभिन्न ठाउँहरु उलाई सहयोग पनि हुनु पर्यो कृषि गर्न सकिन्छ कि व्यापार गर्न सकिन्छ कि के छ यहाँको वातावरणमा सहज हुने खालको के हुन्छ त्यही गर्न पर्छ अब राज्यले इन्भेस्ट गर्ने जनतालाई चाहिँ अर्निंग गर्न पर्यो भनेर अब त्यो जनताको प्राथमिकता दिनु पर्यो के राज्यले राज्यको नीति ठीक हुनु पर्छ र व्यक्ति व्यक्ति चाहिँ मिलेर चाहिँ रोजगारीको अवसरहरु सृजना गर्न पर्छ सरकारको नीतिले गर्दाखेरि अलिकति हामीले आम्दानीको स्तरहरु बढाउन सक्छौं कृषि क्षेत्रमा लगानी का बात आपने नौरोज सरकार ले गरुण परियो अंदान का कुरहार हो गरुण परियो र उत्पादन गरीब जगह बची तेजस्ते बाजार पावनी कुरहार पानी होनु परियो पिछड़े को बार का हारू लाए तालिम दिए रा रोजगार मा जोड़ ना पड़े राष्ट्र को उत्पादन को तो आरुचे एकदम ब्रिटिश वालों पर हैं। आर्मी सब ये दीदी बनी और ले सिप को सिप सीकर आत्मनिर्भर होने पर हैं। किसान आर लाई लगातार व्यवसाय लाई सुलभ दौर में से कॉर्डर को व्यवस्था करने पर Imports from Tatopani Customs have come to a standstill since Monday after the Belly Bridge in Bahrabisi's Kagdal was swept away by river following incessant rainfall. 
Around 60 containers with goods have been stranded in customs office premises and roads. Business persons importing specially fruits and vegetables are the most worried due to the obstruction. Many containers with clothes, shoes and electronics along with those headed for China to collect import items are waiting to resume their journey. Since last year, trade from the Tatupani Customs have gone up dramatically. The Tatupani Customs Office has sustained a massive revenue loss due to road obstruction as it generally raises around 40 million rupees in taxes on a daily basis. सबै भन्दा असर यो तातो पानी नाका जुन एउटा चाहिँ एउटा बोर्डर चाहिँ भएको कारणले गर्दा अहिले व्यवसायलाई परेको छ यसले चाहिँ किनकि अब ठुला ठुला चाहिँ कन्टेनरहरु हिन्नी त्यस्तो समस्या चाहिँ यो पुल नभएको कारणले यो वर्ष यामले गर्दाखेरि यो व्यवसायलाई नै परेको छ यो माथि पनि बाटो खुल्दाखेरि यो पनि लगभग बेली ब्रिजको व्यवस्था पनि भइसकेको हुन्छ माथि तातो पानी माथि लिभिङको पनि सडकहरु चाहिँ त्यतिकै नै तहस नहस छ माथि पनि मर्मत गर्दै आउँदाखेरि हामी यो 7 दिन भित्रमा यसको व्यवस्था पनि गर्छौं Efforts are underway to resume road operation with the coordination of Road Department and Silk Group. Time now for international update. An indefinite curfew has been issued in Bangladesh after the anti-reservation protests became more violent. After the police failed to stop the students' demonstration, the government sent soldiers to the streets to control the activities. According to AFP, 104 people have been killed so far in violent clashes between protesting students and the police. Several people were also injured during the violent protest. Yesterday, protesters stormed various government offices, National Disaster Management Office. The protesters set fire to the office of the state television, BTV, as well. Due to the damage to the offices of some media outlets, they have not been able to update their news. Likewise, phone and internet services across the country have also been completely shut down, while a group has hacked the websites of the Central Bank of Bangladesh, the Prime Minister's office and the police. The government has called the protesting students for talks, but they have rejected it. After the agitation, the Nepali embassy in Dhaka has requested all Nepali students to stay safe and not to leave their places. After Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina addressed the nation last Wednesday and asked the protesters to be patient until the court's decision, the protester made the protests more continuous and violent. As the, as the demonstration in fact intensified, the Ministry of Education there has closed all government and private institutions indefinitely since Wednesday. The students have been protesting for a few days now, demanding the abolition of the 30% reservation in government jobs for the families of freedom fighters. A Russian court has sentenced Wall Street journalist Ivan Gershkovich to 16 years in prison after being found guilty in espionage case. He was kept in the notorious Lefortovo prison in Moscow as a terrorist after being arrested for pre-trial detention without trial. The Russian Prosecutor General's office indicted Gershkovich more than a year after he was first detained. Last month, a case was filed against him in a court in the city of Yekaterinburg. In the same case, the court gave the final verdict and sentenced him to 16 years in prison. The Wall Street Journal protested that the journalist was punished in a humiliating manner. American President Joe Biden, British Prime Minister Keir Starmer and other world leaders are of the opinion that he should be released immediately because he has been sentenced without committing any crime. After the Cold War, he was the first American journalist to be arrested, prosecuted and convicted of espionage in Russia. It is Russia's policy not to extradite a person internationally until they are found guilty. After the sentencing of Ivan, the way for the exchange of prisoners has been paved. Earlier, the Wall Street Journal kept its front page blank to commemorate his one year in a Russian prison. Ivan, who went to Russia while reporting after the start of the Ukraine war, was arrested by the FSB, the country's main security service, on charges of spying on the state's secret information. U.S. President Joe Biden has vowed to continue his campaign for re-election, even as eight more fellow Democrats in Congress urged him to end his floundering 
wing campaign, fearing that it could cost the party dearly in the 5th of November election. More than one in ten Congressional Democrats have now publicly called on the 81-year-old incumbent, who is isolating at his Delaware home with a case of COVID, to drop out following a disastrous June debate against Republican Donald Trump that raised questions about Biden's ability to win or to carry out his duties for another four years. Biden remained defiant, saying he would resume campaigning soon. So far, 31 of the 264 Democrats in Congress have openly called for Biden to end his campaign, while other senior Democratic leaders have pushed him behind the scenes to do so. Democrats are increasingly worried about a Republican sweep in the 5th of November election that could leave Trump and his allies not only in charge of the White House, but also with majorities in both the chambers of Congress. Businesses and services around the world are slowly recovering after a massive IT outage affected computer systems for hours on Thursday and Friday. Many businesses are now dealing with backlogs and missed orders that could take days to resolve. Businesses, banks, hospitals and airlines were among the worst hit after cybersecurity firm CrowdStrike issued a faulty software update which affected Microsoft Windows. CrowdStrike's CEO apologized for the disruption and said a fix had been issued but admitted it could be some time before all systems were back up and running. While some airline services are beginning to return to normal after thousands of flights were cancelled, operators expect some delays and cancellations to persist through the weekend. Health services in Britain, Israel and Germany also suffered problems, with some operations cancelled. The global chaos has sparked concern over the vulnerability of the world's interconnected technologies and the extent to which a single software glitch could have such widespread impact. The problems were first noticed in Australia and possibly felt most severely in the air travel industry. Meanwhile, CrowdStrike's shares fell by around 12% yesterday. That is all for the moment. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.